What if you woke up tomorrow and you realized you were in your early 20s and you became a multi multi millionaire? How would you even get there? I don't know the answer to that question, but together, we're gonna find out. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. I hope you're doing well. And today I got the chance to talk to somebody who in their 20s, while going to college, has made more money than I will make in my entire lifetime times three because he has made tens of millions of dollars. And I wanted to ask him, how did you do it? Is this something we could replicate? How did this affect your life? But out of respect and privacy to my guest's identity, I verified him ahead of time, but this is only a phone call between us, but I hope you enjoy it anyway. Hi, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good, man. Um, what's your OnlyFans account? <laughs> how much money do you have? And like, what's your net worth? So I don't know like exactly, but it's roughly 30 million USD. Oh, that's when you know you've made it. It was like, ah, oh, just stop keeping track <laughs> after the first <laughs> couple million. Uh, how old are you? I'm 23 years old. 23. And just for reference, by the way, the average US person with a bachelor's degree or higher will earn around $1.8 million working their entire lifetime, not counting taxes. So after doing this and saving for decades, the median net worth of a retiree will be around $200,000. So the next question I ask is, how can I be like you, Gypsy? <laughs> uh, so I was 21 when I experienced, like, I would say, like the biggest windfall. Okay. Yeah, so in terms of like trying to be like me, really I think the biggest takeaway that I had from this entire experience is that it's totally not replicable. Like, I don't think you can read a book about how Steve Jobs became Steve Jobs or Jeff Bezos became Jeff Bezos and decide you're going to copy exactly what they did and replicate exactly what they have. It's just not feasible because there's so many things in the world that are completely outside of our control that at a certain point, you know, you just need to get lucky. I think that's definitely what happened to me. Yeah, how did you make your money then? Honestly, there were like three major windfalls that kind of compounded on top of each other. Okay. I will say that for like the last windfall, which is you know, obviously the most substantial one, uh, it was a like a private investment that was actually sourced to me from my father. Uh, okay. So like that kind of goes into the idea that, that we were talking a little bit about before, where you know it's really difficult to attribute anything to pure you know hard work, pure like meritocracy, uh, because if he wasn't my father, if he didn't give me that deal, I definitely would not be talking to you. And you know who, who knows like where I could be, right? like maybe like a bunch of other things could have gone wrong. But you know in the end things just worked out the way that they did. At least in this case, it was definitely more luck than anything. Now, believe it or not, his family are first generation immigrants. And as a first generation immigrant myself, I wanted to ask, where did my parents go wrong? <laughs> in other words, how did his dad get a job that paid him so much? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely say that like in my father's case, it was also definitely extremely lucky as well. He started his own company in the late 90s uh, basically having worked on Wall Street and for a like a very large uh, consulting firm in New York City. Okay. And uh, he worked there, he grinded there. Actually, the thing that convinced him to quit his job was his boss being fired because, you know, for a really long time, he had thought this is the path to financial stability. You know, work hard, do well at your job, get promoted, climb the corporate ladder. Uh, but then when he saw his boss go from someone who was you know, seemingly on top of the world, someone that he really deeply respected, to someone that was asking him to go to the office to get his glasses for him, his entire perspective kind of changed. And so from that point, he decided that he never wanted to be in that position, he wanted to be his own boss. He started a, uh, like a software as a service company, and he ended up selling it in 2006. What was your dad's yeah. skill set that allowed him to move to a different country and get the position that he had? Honestly, he had a very, very limited grasp of the English language. Frankly, he probably could barely speak any. So, you know, it's a big question mark to me how he was a even able to come to America. Yeah. You know, like at that time, the country that he came from was very impoverished, very poor. And you know, he was fortunate to have gone to 
you know, one of the top universities in his country. And so like because of that, he had a, a really unique opportunity to come to the United States uh, for a PhD that was completely funded by the university. And they gave him a stipend with money that he could send back home to his parents. Right. So for him, it was really a no-brainer. Uh, his undergrad and his PhD was in physics. So I think really more than anything, it was just, you know, work ethic one and two, you know, being lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time. Now, how much of that success or even his parents' success can be attributed to luck versus hard work? Yeah, so I, I want to be careful about this because I think sometimes people get the wrong idea. Right. Personally, I do think that 99% of everything that I have, everything that my parents have, comes down to luck. But at the same time, I don't think you need to worry about being lucky. You know, like you shouldn't let like, the idea that you need to be lucky discourage you from working hard mm -hmm. because for me i have this underlying belief hard work is ultimately what determines the direction of your life right so i think no matter what someone like bill gates or jeff bezos they would have been wealthy regardless you know maybe not worth you know tens of billions hundreds of billions of dollars but certainly upper middle class at the very least, right, as a baseline. When luck comes into play, it's more about the intensity of that success. At least uh, that's you know, my personal opinion. What's the point of doing anything and working when you have tens of millions of dollars? What more is there to life at this point? What's the point of working this hard after this point in your life now versus just retiring and enjoying your millions? Like what drives you to do anything anymore at this point? I think that's a really interesting question. And it's also one that I had when I was in college and I met someone whose family was you know, extremely, extremely wealthy, like perhaps like tens of billions of US dollars. He was on the Forbes uh, like billionaires list as his father. And I, I remember even like speaking to my dad about it, you know, like at that point, what is the, the point of even going to college and trying to get a job? Right. The big thing that he said to me at a certain point, Sometimes it's valuable just to be a functioning member of society. And I think that like especially goes towards the degree part. Uh, it definitely, there's many, many paths to financial success that don't require a college degree. Actually, in my opinion, taking out loans for most college degrees is ridiculous and totally not worth it. But I think if you're at a point where you know, the tuition doesn't matter, you have the, the luxury of time to, you know, enjoy yourself. Uh, I think like one, the college experience itself is extremely meaningful. And two, I think that, you know, for whatever reason, in many parts of society, you really need to have a college degree, you know, a respectable you know, career to be taken seriously. And, you know, fortunately, that's just the way that the world works. That's true. Is college still worth it? Personally, I think that the price of most U.S. colleges, most private U.S. colleges, is ridiculous. I really don't think that it's worth it for most people, uh, especially if you're not majoring in like a STEM field. You know, if you really want to go to college, go to your local community college, go to your state college. And I think the outcome will be like relatively the same. Another thing I wanted to ask is, when people ask you about money, do you keep it a secret or do you tell people? Do people treat you differently knowing that you have money? Like, have you noticed a difference in how people talk to you or try to befriend you or try to interview for YouTube videos? <laughs> <laughs> there are not a lot of people that know exactly you know, how much I made. Okay. Uh, it's impossible for humans to ignore that, right? So even my good friends who you know, they do know, right. I'm sure it's altered their perception of me in some way. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe like positive, maybe negative. You know, like there, there are some of my friends who like for a reason, they think that I'm like some sort of investing genius because you know, I've had like a, a few like notable high conviction investments. Yeah, I mean like re really at the end of the day, I don't feel any different. I, I can't really say like how their perception has changed specifically, but yeah, I mean, I, I do go out of my way to try to keep it 
on the down low. A question I've always wanted answered is, does having a lot of money really make you happy? Or if you didn't have the amount of money that you have today, would you still find a way to find a meaningful, happy life at this point? I, I don't think the money itself is something that makes me happy. I think when I'm really stressed out about you know, project I'm working on or like whatever, like there's just something in my life that's like giving me a lot of anxiety. It does feel good to be able to like take a step back and say, you know, even if this entire thing explodes and I completely mess up, right. everything will be okay. Like I will not, my life won't be ruined. I'm not gonna go out on the streets and you know, whatever, like live in a cardboard box. Like I, I have like some foundation to support me. Right. So I, I think in that way, it's, it's more reassuring and comforting than it is as something that like causes me actively to be happy. Right. You know, having a little bit more like financial flexibility is really great in, I guess, allowing you to pursue the things that you want to pursue. Uh, definitely there's a ton of life experiences that I would not have if you know, things had gone differently in my life. Is wealth inequality really a problem? And if it is, how do you think we should solve it? Let me just put you on the spot and solve the world problems now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely a huge problem. Like, especially if you go to you know, major US cities. I mean, you know, I had the fortune to have lived both in San Francisco uh, and Manhattan and New York City. Right. And you know, if you've ever been to like either of those cities, you know it's that insane. the yeah. inequality. Yeah, like, you know, like you go to San Francisco, it's depressing, it's devastating because there's so much wealth being created there. But it's obvious that, you know, very, very few people are actually touching it. And it's definitely a problem that uh, I think about the most. At least right now, as like a naive 23 year old, who really does not have uh, that much life experience. I'm convinced that the solution is a very, very strict tax on the states. Okay. So after someone passes away, I, I think that, you know, past 5 million, past 10 million, you know, whatever the threshold is, I think 100% of all those assets should be taxed. Uh, the estate tax in the US is definitely very inefficient. Get rid of the step up basis clause. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, step basis is yeah. like ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I, just to that point, like, you know, maybe we can keep it for, you know, people that are inheriting, like, whatever, like a, a um, million or two. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, you're inheriting, like, their parents, like, what's left in their parents' 401k or, right. you know, their family home or whatever. But Mitt Romney's children should not be receiving like a huge tax benefit because right. their father passed away. So it's almost like a reset button for your kids. It's, it's definitely it's a, a complicated situation. I mean, when I was a kid, my dad told me that he made $10,000 a year. And I actually thought that was like a lot of money because I didn't know anything. And I didn't realize that it was a super small until my dad's friend said, how much do you want to make when you grow up? And I said $11,000 a year. And he, he basically explained to me that that was not a, an adequate amount of money for any, anyone trying to raise a family. And the other thing I wanted to know is, if you're a teenager or a 20 year old watching this video, what is one piece of actionable advice that anyone can use to replicate a portion of that success? This is a piece of advice actually that my dad gave me when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And I, I really appreciated it a lot. Like, it's definitely not something that you would expect from a traditionally strict parents. Mm -hmm. He told me that it's so much more important in life to find something that you're good at than to you know, see like, okay, like the path of being rich is to become an engineer and just following someone else's path and following you know, someone else's footsteps, trying to chase what they're doing. Uh, there's money in literally everything. There's success in literally everything. Like if you're good enough at what you do, you will be successful and you will have a good life. Uh, but if you're doing something that you hate, just because you're trying to chase a paycheck, you're always going to lose out to the person that actually enjoys that job. I wanted to make this video to showcase that maybe if you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, doesn't matter. And you're wondering, why haven't I found my success? Not to worry about it, because for every one of those success stories that I'm sure you've heard lots of, there are millions of people out there that are equally talented, that equally work as hard, that have not found that opportunity. And just when we give ourselves the credit for our success and that we knew it all along, we we're smart and intelligent, is when we realize that we were given circumstances in life far beyond our control that determine our success. And some of us were given certain head starts that most of us will never 
never have. Now I consider myself very lucky to be born to a family of entertainers that were able to escape Russia to go to a country with far better opportunities. And that's an insane luck of the draw that most people don't even think about. So imagine how lucky we both are having access to the internet, knowing what compound interest, dividends, Roth IRA, 401ks are. These are concepts that are foreign to most parts of the world and we're lucky to have financial information and technology be so democratized that we can just sit here on the internet with our phones watching this video, which is crazy to me. So I don't want you to think that everything with success has to do with luck because luck is nothing more than hard work and preparation meeting opportunity. So if you haven't found your opportunity, then keep working hard and keep preparing. And you can do that by signing up with Webull by depositing $100 and getting one free stock valued up to $1,600. That was the smoothest transition that I've ever done. That was good, I'm gonna keep that in. <laughs> you can get another free stock by signing up for free with Robinhood. You can join my free Discord group. Follow me on Instagram, I post from time to time. Love you, thank you so much for watching the video. I will see you back here on Monday and Friday, and maybe sometimes on Wednesday. Bye-bye. To give you an idea, if you ever meet me in person, especially in New York City, You'll see me carrying around three refillable water bottles <laughs> because I refuse to spend four dollars on a, like Manhattan, like 16 fluid ounces bottles of water. Yeah, that summarizes it. Enjoy the rest of your night, man. You too, man. Take care. See ya. All right, bye-bye.